And language is a set of arbitrary symbols shared between members of a group. Um, this can be verbal, this can be signed, it can be written. Um, for instance, if we look at the English consonants here, they're kind of different from the Russian consonants, but if somebody from that speaks English sees one of these letters, they're going to know what sound that they should be using. Same with Russian, and the same with the sound language. And with a particular form of hand, people know what you're talking about. Now, all animals have a form of communication, so what is it that makes human language different from other animals? Well, animals have something that's called a signal communication or a call system. There are studies underway to see if these call systems actually do convey any kind of cultural meaning. So there are some physical anthropologists some primatologists studying chimpanzees, and they're studying what are called the panhoots, the calls that chimpanzees do to one another to see if there actually is some meaning being conveyed. So it'll be interesting over the next few years or so to see what everybody comes up with. But what makes human language unique is this thing called semantic universality, which means we have the ability to convey information that's relevant to all aspects of our experience and thought, and we have productivity, which is an infinite range of expressions that others can understand using a finite set of rules. So those are the two things that really set human language off, or apart, excuse me, from signal communication. So language is how we convey information from generation to generation. It's how we transmit our culture to the different generations. So we send ideas, we can send inventions, memories, all of these things are part of language and it's done lots of different ways. Bedtime stories is one. Songs is another one. Nursery rhymes, books, jump rope ditties, dialogue, whether it's something that you're having face-to-face -face with somebody, whether it's on TV or in a film. These are all the ways that we transmit culture. Now anthropologists studying language, and they're called linguistic anthropologists, have identified some kind of interesting things, at least I think they're interesting. And one is that all societies have language. There has never been a society where there's not been some form of communication present. There's no correlation between social and grammatical complexity. So we haven't really talked about social complexity, and we think of this in a couple ways. We think of heterogeneous societies and homogeneous societies, and you can think of this as a continuum. So a homogeneous society, people are pretty in independent. And what we mean here, this is not the independence that we think of here in the United States, but people have all of the skills they need to survive. So they could build a shelter, they could find food. So if they got separated, their chance of survival would actually be pretty high because they have the skills that they need and everybody has access to the resources that they need to survive. Now, at the other end of the spectrum is a heterogeneous society where there's a high degree of interdependence among the people. So we live in a highly heterogeneous society. So we're dependent on other people to get our food. We're dependent on other people to build our houses, to build our modes of transportation. So all of that is an indication of a high degree of interdependence or a highly heterogeneous society. And culture groups can fall anywhere on that continuum. But again, just because our society is highly heterogeneous doesn't necessarily mean we have the most complex grammar. And in fact, some of the most homogeneous societies have the most complex grammar. Most people are fully competent users of their language. We actually don't have to be taught to speak the language. As long as we're exposed to it, we can pick it up. We just have to be exposed to the sounds. So let's talk about verbal language and we can talk about those sounds. Um, the formal properties of verbal language are sounds, vocabulary, and syntax. And all languages have these three things, but there's a lot of variety in how it's all put together. So phonemes, again, are, are sounds. And groups have chosen a suite of sounds to construct their verbal communication systems. And you know, one letter can actually represent a lot of different sounds. In a language's written form, linguists have developed something called a phonetic alphabet. So we can write a word, how it's actually pronounced, 
and learn how to speak a language using this phonetic alphabet. It's actually really helpful if you're learning another language. So here's an example of a phonetic alphabet. You can find lots of them online. I've got a link here. Let's see if we can pull it up to a phonetic alphabet. So if you look at the written text for this particular lecture, this URL or web address is in there because if you click on any of these, and I don't know if you'll be able to hear this. If not, you can go to this site and, and check it out yourself, but it has all the different pronunciations here. So it's a pretty interesting little page. So those are our phonemes. Syntax. This is a study of how words are arranged into phrases and sentences. This is the grammar. So groups put sentences together differently. So we can put adjectives before nouns or they could come after nouns. Again, it really just depends on what the people agree to over time as to how things are going to go together. And then we have morphemes and the morpheme is the smallest unit of meaning in a language. So let's use the word helper as an example. It has two units, or it has two morphemes. One is help, which means to provide assistance or aid. And the ER conveys the information that this is a person who's performing the action in the first unit. So if we just saw help on its own, we'd be able to understand that. If we just saw er, though, it only conveys meaning when it's with that other morpheme. If somebody was just standing around and went er, we might assume that they're trying to figure out what they want to say. But again, as long as it's with that first morpheme, it has some understanding. Now all of these things, phonemes, syntax, morphemes, all help linguists understand languages. And again, getting used to this phonetic alphabet is a great way to learn how to speak a foreign language. Um, but we can use this to help identify languages that are related to one another, and all sorts of things that can help us look at the origins of language. It's pretty fascinating stuff. And if you want to learn more about all of this, you can take a linguistic anthropology class, which we do offer here, but normally only every other year.